popular YouTube channel, The Y Files, doesn't think David Grush is a whistleblower. Let's dive in and see why The Y Files is saying that. Um, it's actually quite interesting uh, what they're saying about David Grush and a few other people. Um, so we're going to take a look at a clip from a recent episode of The Y Files, and then we're going to take a look at a clip, a longer clip, that might help explain why AJ from The Y Files feels this way. Um, I don't know. I just found this absolutely fascinating. And honestly, I was a little confused by it because I just it, it, I wasn't expecting it being a fan of this show. I love The Y Files, y'all. Huge fan of this show. Um, so let's dive in. What do you say, betters? If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, y'all. We put our new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I never miss a day. So now, of course, comment down below of what you think of what I'm hearing. Am I, you know, misinterpreting this? You tell me what you think, all right? And of course, hit that like button, y'all. If you hit the like button, that really helps us out and it helps out the video. So thank y'all so much. All right, look, let's go. Oh, I can't wait to read the comments, y'all. Let's see what y'all say about this. Look, I believe UFOs exist, and I believe we have recovered craft, but I'm skeptical of anyone who's worked in intelligence, because once you're in, you're never out. Whatever's being said about UFOs by people like Doty, Putoff, Elizondo, David Grush, I take all that with a grain of salt. These are not whistleblowers. These are people who spent most of their careers in intelligence. The things they say, they're allowed to say. They have permission. Uh, permission for who? Well, isn't that the big question? Pat Price, the psychic who started it all, comes off as the most credible of all the people I talked about today. He was a retired cop from a small town. He used his gift to solve crimes, to help people. And Pat was a patriot. The CIA asked for help and he provided it. Four months later, Pat was dead. In my research, I found something Pat Price said that bothered me. He said this, people have infiltrated all government in sensitive positions not to control government, the processes, or people, but rather to be in positions of power, to stop politically any activity that may produce a result that could cause discovery. Americans want information about UFOs released. Congress tried and couldn't do it. Presidents have tried and couldn't do it. So if our elected leaders aren't in charge, who is? During Stargate, it was discovered that anyone can learn remote viewing. Some people like Joe McMonagle and Pat Price are naturally gifted, but the rest of us, with practice and training, it's a skill we can all develop. But that would mean the end of all secrets. That can't be allowed to happen. Secrets are the source of their power, whoever they are. And that's why Stargate was shut down. Not because it failed, because it worked. Look y'all, that's one of the best wi file episodes in my opinion. I'm gonna put a link uh, to the bottom or in the description in the bottom, uh, so you can check it out. Um, again, I love that show. I mean, they're just like full-blown, amazing shows. Um, but I just found that interesting that he said that about David Grush. I mean, he put Doty, Elizondo, right? Like, put off Grush all in the same boat. Um, and I just found that quite interesting. Now, look, I do have another clip. Uh, that we're going to jump into, but I just wanted to discuss this for a second. I mean, that's just odd to me that uh, I just I just wasn't expecting that, especially since he thinks Pat Price, <coughs> pardon me, is credible, but not David Grush. I mean, he did testify before Congress. I don't know. I just this idea that David Grush is being told what to say. He's not a whistleblower then what's he doing? Like, that's the plan from the gov like people within the government who are in charge is to have David Grush come out in public like this and make a mockery because so, people are calling it a mockery of the government. Right. So I don't understand. It just doesn't add up. I just don't. I don't know. I, I just don't get it. I just don't know how someone like Doty and Grush go in the same conversation, you know, and Elizondo. I don't know, man. That that whole thing is so odd to me with Doty because I've seen a show where Lou Elizondo does go on, you know, a particular show that Doty is like a regular on. All right? It's like, what's going on here? I don't understand. 
you know, let, let's say this. Let's say you were going to try to infiltrate the UFO community from the government side. And again, the clip I'm about to show from the Y Files is pretty interesting about some of this. So let's say, not what I'm about to tell you though. This is just a thought I have. Let, let's say, you know, bear with me here. Let's say you want to put fake information out about UFOs into the UFO community, kind of keep it going, right? And just, you know, it's all fake. So let's just keep pushing information. How would you go about doing it? Let, let's just take, for instance, right? There's no UFOs. There's no aliens. The government is just hiding advanced tech. How do you go about doing it? Do you think a good way would be to have people like Lou Elizondo and such go in to smaller little shows, podcasts, online, right? Think about what's the best way to spread this message about UFOs and aliens, right? Go on these small shows and sort of plant the seed there. And then it grows, right? And those stories get picked up by the larger podcasts and it grow, grow, grow. Next thing you know, you see it on this show and they're talking about it. It's like, where'd that come from? It's hard to trace it back, right? Because it starts on the small little show, right? So I don't know, like, it. that would be how you would fake it, is like sending Elizondo and people like him on these different shows and doing these different things, you know? But then they also go do big shows, right? Like 60 Minutes and whatever. Um, they write a book, right? They create a foundation that then they want money from the government to help fund that, right? Like the Soul Foundation, right? That's their, their purpose is to get the government to give them government contracts. That's, that's what they're doing. That's what it's for. The, the goal, the, the fun, how do you think the funding from that comes? Where does that money come from? They're hoping to get money from the government. For contract, like I said, for contracts. So I don't know, y'all. It's just so confusing. And let me tell you why I'm so confused, right? Let's jump in. Let's take a look at this other clip. It's a lot longer, okay? But bear with me here. And just, I might stop it every once in a while to discuss some stuff, all right? So just for copyright, too. I can't just play it all the way through because it's very long. Not too long, but like, you know, seven minutes, eight minutes or so. All right, let's go. Since the 1970s, a number of people with very high security clearances have been working on UFO phenomena. They were interacting with each other so much they gave themselves code names. The code names were all birds, so they called themselves the aviary. Cute. Well, let's start with the owl. Psychic research begins with Harold Hal Putoff in the early 1970s at SRI, the Stanford Research Institute. We know that Putoff worked with the CIA on Project Stargate, but the OWL has worked on and off for the CIA and the Defense Intelligence Agency for years. But most of his work happened after he left the Church of Scientology. You bleep me? Well, you know we can't say the S word. They, they sue people. Fair enough. Well, how high did the OWL get in the uh, uh, ch uh, Church of Tom Cruise? Well, OT7. That was the top level at the time. Yikes. It should be said that Hal Putoff has stated like he didn't do very much with Scientology, just took a few classes, you know, wasn't really that into it. But he got to the highest level. Probably pretty into it. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, oh, congratulations. What a nice achievement. Hey, I'm just giving information. I'm not making judgments. I am. Putoff is also involved in UFOs. He founded To The Stars, a private venture investigating UFOs. Also on the board of To The Stars is Christopher Mellon, who's also former CIA and DIA, and Steve Justice, former director of advanced systems development at Lockheed Martin, and Luis Elizondo, a former intelligence officer who says he ran ATIP. ATIP, or the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, essentially continued Project Blue Book. Elizondo says he ran this program. The Pentagon says he had nothing to do with it. Elizondo says this is a smear campaign. Pop quiz. Who do you believe? An intelligence officer or an intelligence agency? Neither. Correct. Next, Blue Jay. Do 
So think about that. He's saying you can't really believe the intelligence agency or the agent, right? So Lou Elizondo. That's interesting, right? It's like... It's like, what's going on, y'all? Is there something crazy going on? It's just interesting to think about. Um, let's continue. The a aviary. Have y'all heard of this? Dr. Kit Green also worked on Stargate, and he was a CIA analyst. In 2001, leaked emails showed that Dr. Green said the infamous alien autopsy video was true. It was. Well, it was a film produced in 1995, a hoax. Later, Green said that he never said it was real. He said the still shot of the face looked real. So, which is it? Next bird, Falcon. Falcon is the infamous Richard Doty. Doty was a special agent for the Air Force OSI, the Office of Special Investigations. So, Richard Doty, real quick, um, full transparency, right? I did that video about Mike Disclosure and Disclosure Tonight, and I am doing a follow-up video, and... Apparently, on the show, right, Richard Doty is a regular on that show, Disclosure Tonight, okay, that I'm talking about. And he, you know, they talked about me. And he's restating how he's a changed man, you know. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you're about to hear about him, just know he says now he's a changed man. He was in charge of UFO disinformation programs. One of Doty's assignments was to infiltrate the UFO community and flood it with as much disinformation as possible. This way people would know what to believe. Bill Moore, a well-known UFO author, destroyed his career in a single afternoon. He publicly said he was taking payments from the government via Doty and helping spread lies. He was essentially booed off the stage, and we haven't heard much from him since. But Doty has since come forward and said UFOs are real, and that most of the UFO stories we hear are real. And that's what is so disgusting and troubling within the UFO community. That's why I have nothing to do with them anymore. I've tried. I've, I've went to UFO conventions and tried to explain what the, what the truth is, and nobody wants to hear you because they've written a book that says it happened this way, and they're not going to listen to you, even though they don't, don't, really don't know the truth. How funny is that, that not just a week ago or whatever, I showed that clip on Vetted, right, before this episode ever came out, or we, I talked about Doty, right, in this clip. Um, that's interesting. You know, because when I saw that, I was like, wait a second, I just covered that on Vetted, right, about Doty, and how that's just such an odd statement where he's at, right? Like, again, what I don't understand about Richard Doty, think about this. When Richard Doty tells you, hey, I'm a changed man. I'm trying to come to these UFO conventions and tell you the truth and tell you, you know, th think about this. Does Richard Doty not understand how odd that is does he not can he not understand how someone would be defensive of him coming to them with information about ufos does he not get that that that's odd like and he's upset that people can't accept him think about that right that's like some you know whatever uh, i don't know you know god the example i want to give is just not good uh, I, don't, I don't want to compare him to that but just let's just say someone is told hey you 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 know you did something bad to this certain group of people you know like a priest who molests kids and then they're like hey uh the priest you know Later is like, what do you mean I can't be around kids? Why? I've changed. I'm a new man. Come on, let me around the kids. It'll be different this time. No, you're not. You lost your privilege. Especially when you did it as rampantly as Doty has proven to be. He even 
paid other people to do it. And think about this. What about all the people that Doty paid who never came forward? Because they want that money. How many other people have been paid who have never come forward? And why did he come forward? He had a conscience, affected him. I'm just telling y'all, the fact that Doty can't publicly be like, yeah, I get it, why you wouldn't want me in this. I mean, why would you even be in this community? It just doesn't even make sense to insert yourself again and force people to accept you in. Think about that. The mindset that Doty has to have to be like, <laughs> I screwed him over. I paid people to screw him over and I'm back in. They let me back in the door because they're stupid. That's what he thinks. I'm, I don't know. Maybe. Right. But what kind of ego is it? Just walk away, dude. You don't get that people can't trust you. Right? Like, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. If you're a changed man, fine. But go live a life somewhere. You don't get that you're not, a lot of people just aren't going to trust you. I don't trust him. I don't. Why should I? There's so many other people. Why would I trust this guy? Again, okay, you paid your dues, you, whatever. I don't know. Move on. Has he paid his dues? There's a guy who he fed information to who later killed himself, y'all. That guy went crazy because of the misinformation that he was told by Doty. And think about the guy who took payments and then gave up his whole career. And again, think about all the people who haven't come forward. You watch Disclosure tonight and you think, how are they funded? I just don't know, y'all. It just, it, it bothers me a lot to see Richard Doty. Let's get back to this clip, y'all. Is he telling the truth now? Who knows? Our next bird is Woodpecker. Woodpecker is Jamie Shandera, a film producer. He's considered one of the birds who wants UFO disclosure. So there are good guys and bad guys in the aviary. But enter Bob Collins, AKA Condor. Bob Collins is also a former intelligence agent with OSI who engaged in UFO disinformation campaigns. In 1989, a documentary was released called UFO Cover Up Live. Shandera was featured in that documentary, but this TV program got people asking questions. Many in the UFO community consider the doc to be nothing but a disinformation campaign. And it's easy to see why. Bob Collins, Chandler. right. He stated in his book that after the documentary, he attended what he called a mini summit. This was a meeting to deal with the fallout of the TV show. At the summit was The Owl, Hal Putoff, Falcon, Richard Doty, Blue Jay, Kit Green, and Bill Moore, who was being paid by the government to lie to the public about UFOs. According to Collins' book, quote, Kit Green took center stage by proposing several lines of attack involving disclosure strategies. So are they on the side of disclosure or disinformation? There's more. You might remember my episode on Project Serpo. This was an exchange program between the United States and aliens from the planet Serpo. It's a great story, and by the way, all these are linked below. Now, it took a long time, but the planet Serpo story was found to be a hoax, perpetrated by what came to be known as the Team of Five. Two of the five were Victor Martinez and Bill Ryan, who ran the website, disseminating the information. The information came from three men, Owl, Falcon, and Blue Jay. Put off Doty and Green. Once again, Doty later said Serpo is true, and it may be. But in telling the story, the team of five got caught telling all kinds of other lies. But some of the lies they say are true. I get into all this in the episode. And by the way, Bob Lazar and a few other whistleblowers also say Serpo is true. So you make the call. But birds of a feather stick together. Neither talk about it much, but for years, Doty, AKA the Falcon, worked for Putoff, AKA the Owl. Doty spent 10 years as a private contractor for Putoff's company, EarthTech. EarthTech worked with the US intelligence community on black programs. 
don't take my word for it. Here's how. This clip is quite interesting, but it is more interesting that Dodie then went and worked for put off. And just the fact that all these people are connected. Again, why is Luis Elizondo connected to Richard Doty? I'm talking recently. I don't know. Let's continue. The particular area that I took responsibility for is based on this. There was a critical issue as you can well imagine, in these deep black programs, it's difficult for contractors to obtain expert opinion on critical technologies because there's such high level security and there's compartmentalization, we call it stove piping. And so I was contracted to commission papers from experts around the globe. And since we didn't want to be in the position of going out and say, hey, we're trying to figure out this UFO thing. Uh, you know, can you help us out here? I mean, the publicity associated with that in our black program would, would have been a disaster. What do y'all hear in that clip? What is it? What, what do y'all hear there? Right? Is put off saying, like, we have UFO technology, but we need it studied, but there's real no way to study because we can't say that, so because everything's so compartmentalized stove stove piping as he says so we need expert opinions so we'll say it's for x instead but really it's for you know whatever i don't know y'all here's something else in 2006 a book came out that blew the whistle on everything it's called The Black World of UFOs, Exempt from Disclosure. It talks about government cover-ups, sensitive DIA and CIA documents, reverse engineering alien spacecraft. All the great UFO stories are in this book. I love it, what's, what's the problem? It was written by Collins and Doty. Condor and Falcon. Yup. Yeah. Look, I believe UFOs exist, and I believe we have recovered craft, but I'm skeptical of anyone who's worked in intelligence, because once you're in, you're never out. Whatever's being said about UFOs by people like Doty, Putoff, Elizondo, David Grush, I take all that with a grain of salt. These are not whistleblowers. These are people who spent most of their careers in intelligence. The things they say, they're allowed to say. They have permission. Uh, permission from who? Well, isn't that the big question? Pat Price. So, there you go, y'all. I don't know. I can't wait to read the comments here. Um, I just, I just don't see how Grush fits in with the rest because Grush worked for a lot of other agencies, you know. And I just, I don't know. It just seems odd. Why, why would he go testify? I mean, look, Luis Elizondo hasn't testified. Why won't he testify? You know, it, it's one thing about. Elizondo that's interesting is I saw it in, in a documentary that came out from Ron James back in like March, April. And I've made video, I made a video on this, um, but not the comedy made, but he made a comment in the documentary that, that he just said, I'm not for disclosure. So he said, I'm not for UFO disclosure. I'm not for that. I'm an American. I'm a Patriot. You know, um, that, that's not what he's here for. And I just, that's always stuck with me. Because that just doesn't align with the message he gives online. Right? And saying he wants, what, he's supporting David Grush. And I just don't, like, what's this all for then if it's not for disclosure? I don't know. But the aviary and this whole thing and Richard Doty and the misinformation and what's going on, is there a version of that right now? And is Doty being out and about, is he part of it again? Again, my whole thing with Doty is, okay, great, you changed. But the fact that you're upset that people can't like accept you is beyond me. Dude, you can't understand why people are weary of you? We don't know you personally, but we do know some things you did that are pretty bad.
okay, you were doing it for your job as the government, right? You, you were just doing your job, taking orders. Okay. What does that mean? Again, the, the fact that you can't understand, right? I mean, what if your orders were to do something, right? Like, I don't, I don't know if that's an excuse, right? Like, I'm just saying. I just, the fact that he can't understand that is, is suspicious. It's very suspicious. It's all just very suspicious. So look, my, my whole thing as always is just concentrating on the government aspect. Um, you know, David Grush, again, you know, like I told my friend Dave today, look, David Grush gave a, a treasure map with an X on it until that is debunked until someone until you know the pentagon comes out and says that's nonsense i'm in this right because that has not been said in fact they've done everything they can, they have can possibly do to keep to look at what david grush has said you know here's the places here's the names go to it and the fact that they're putting roadblocks up in front of him I mean, what am I supposed to think, right? That's, it's, it's nuts. Something is going on, right? Something is being hidden, but it doesn't help with people like Doty, right? And if he can't understand how the fact that he put out misinformation in this community and is still floating around and that's a part of it and he's not, and he can't understand how that's an issue, and people would be upset at him about it, right? Like, think about that. We want transparency, disclosure, the truth. This guy did everything in his power to make sure you wouldn't get that and had other people do it, right? And now he wants in and he's mad at you because you won't accept it. You know, that's just not cool. The abuser shouldn't get mad at the victim. Like, this doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I'm weary of that show, Disclosure Tonight, because I guarantee you he's feeding them information that they're spreading. And you just can't trust that show. You know, I had a talk with um, someone who's a fan of the show here, producer Brandon. Shout out to him. Great guy. And we spoke about you know, disclosure tonight, and maybe I should put out an olive branch and reach out to them and talk to them. And I thought, you know, that's a great idea. I don't, you know, I don't want any bad blood. I'm not trying to be involved in any drama in this and vetted, you know, and that is the truth. I just want to focus on reporting stories every day. And I thought, yeah, I could reach out to them and, and, and let's just have, maybe we do a live stream together or something, just put all the bad blood between us. But the more I thought about it and the more I just, I'm not going to do that. And not because I have any bad blood against them. I just me quiero alejar de ellos. Right? Do you know, if anyone understands Spanish, you understand what I just said. I just want to distance myself from them. Okay? And nothing against just bygones be bygones. You do show, I'm going to do mine. And hey, man, I don't know. And I just don't want to get involved. So nothing against them. I'm not going to cover them. This time and the ne the next follow up video that I show because I'm going to show the emails that Mike sent and everything. Let let at least let their response to my video and whatever let them have that moment and then I'm done. Uh, if they talk about me every day on their channel after that forever, I don't care. You'll never hear me talk about them or bring them up ever again. I just I, it just maybe randomly, but I'm done. I don't care. I don't want to be in the drama. But these kind of things are important. I mean, these are facts, right? So it's at the forefront. It involves the top, the top of the pyramid of where I'm at, which is David Grush and his allegations, right? And what he's claiming. That's where I'm at. So anyway, all right, guys, this is a long enough video. 30 minutes. Holy cow. Um, I talked a long time. Anyway, can't wait to read the comments, y'all. And I'm sure y'all are going to enlighten me and more ways than one. So I look forward to that. Um, we'll see you uh, on another video tomorrow. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Oh, real quick about David Grush. His uh, op-ed 
is coming out in February. Potentially, that's according to Ross Coltart. I listened to the clip on Need to Know. Um, I saw it on Twitter. Someone tweeted out that it was coming out um, sometime in February. Okay. I uh, don't know which publication, and that could change too, right? Because it was supposed to come out in January. So who knows? I don't know. Um, but yes, it's all based on what he's been cleared to say, right? So, um, yeah, there we go. That, that, that's it. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, all right, we'll, we'll see what kind of video we make uh, tomorrow. All right, guys, hope you all have a good, um, Saturday. Enjoy the weekend. We'll see you tomorrow on Sunday. Remember every day is a gift. We'll see you tomorrow, y'all. Peace, fetters.